all right welcome guys welcome 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 to our second annual back to school giveaway an event and before i invite my guest i just want to um talk about what this event is all about so this is the second time we're doing it and we have so many amazing resources to give you guys um so if you want to go ahead to, to to enter you go to noelle's nuggets um instagram page and i'm actually gonna bring christina on christina can you request to come in christina is gonna be our guest speaker for today there we go all right as she's coming in you want to go to noelle's nuggets noelle's nuggets instagram page to enter to win our amazing resources um you can enter from now till hi christina you can enter from now till friday um august 14th and all entries close at 9 p.m and then the winner is going to be announced so you have that time to enter to win our giveaway prizes and without further ado christina welcome 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 very good to see you Thanks. um so nice seeing you nice seeing you too i'm gonna give you guys a uh, tell you guys something so this is what happened this event christina was supposed to actually come on and talk to us on friday and because it's a five-day event and so that's kind of how i scheduled it and so the schedule just kept clashing she had work on friday so it was either friday or wednesday i think monday and so it's not coincidental that it's monday i feel like it's even god ordained because we are talking about how to grow um as a christian in college and that entails putting god first and so just Amen. starting this five-day back to school giveaway and challenge and event with god is very important it's a very important aspect and i don't think it's coincidental so just a short introduction um actually christina has she's not a new face here to know all those nuggets pre-covid i did a video of a video interview with her when we could actually sit down together and talk um face to face i did a video interview with her on youtube so you should go check that out but one thing that i i loved um regarding christina's video was the fact that she kept circling back to um god being the reason why she was able to graduate and so we're gonna go deep into that but first just a brief um introduction to who christina is christina is actually of haitian descent she has a degree in psychology from northeastern university um she's a registered nurse and currently getting her bsn at curry college she's also the founder of fired up fate prayer line which meets every thursday at 7 p.m eastern standard time via conference <laughs> call that was a tongue twister eastern standard but oh, okay well welcome christina welcome um thank you so much noella for having me pleasure live because i'm a grandma i'm not really good on social media so i'm up in here <laughs> i'm doing it. We're doing it so thank you you're welcome it's a pleasure to huh? have you here we're gonna do it um so i and christina have actually been friends i think we met at church and then over the years we've gotten closer and so i've enjoyed um listening to christina's testimonies and stories not stories um, but really testimonies of um, God's grace and mercy and deliverance. And so um, I want Christina to um, talk about an era in her life where she wasn't so close to God. And like many of us, it's, we didn't just get born. We didn't, we, <laughs> let me rephrase that. Like many of us, we have like valley experiences and desert experiences that kind of, we taught separated us from God. And so I want Christina to talk about her desert experiences um, so that you guys know that we're not coming from a place of perfection or we're coming from a place of restoration of 
and sharing our testimonies of how God has brought us through. So, Christina, can you talk briefly about your life without Christ as the center during your time as a college student? And I know you're still a college student, obviously, but I'm talking about the earlier stages of being a college student. Yeah, since thank you for making me focus on college student because I was going to bring it way back to when I was 15 and you know, you heard the story. So as a college student, <laughs> I don't think we want to go there yet. As a college student, um, as you guys know from, you know, if you guys watched a previous video, my college year started at a community college. So at that time, I was so college focused. Um, I didn't really put God first. I was still, besides studying, like, I remember I used to, this is when I ended up going to Northeastern. I went clubbing one night <laughs> and then went to the library because Snell Library is open 24-7 and studied. So, I mean, I put my school first, but then I, I was not putting God first. I was putting myself first. I was putting, um, let's keep it real, I was putting men mm -hmm. first. I wasn't putting God first. And that's what, that's where, you know, God had to deliver me from that because by not putting him first, I went from hot mess to a grace, so <laughs> we'll go there. So no, I just wasn't putting God first. I mean, um, I grew up in the church, but I didn't have a personal relationship. So my focus on God started when I started to have a personal relationship with him, not just my mom telling me, you know, about God and, you know, about the devil, <laughs> but me having my own personal relationship. So me not focused was going to the clubs. Um, a lot, like having fun, going to parties, having fun. But then I'm not going to lie. I, I was focused. Like I, I just told you, I will go to the club, you know, end at two o'clock. And then I'm, I'm at the library, the rest of the <laughs> studying, you know, I was studying, but just not putting God first. You're missing a big piece of your spiritual life. So, yeah, I love, I love that you say that, that you were focused in college. So that's the thing. We tend to confuse us being focused in college as college students because we know we're going there to get an education. You know, we're spending all this money, like college debt is in trillions. And so we're spending all of this money and we are going to college to get a degree. And so you are focused in college, but then there's a different focus. You know, when the Bible talks about keeping your eyes on Jesus, setting your eyes on Jesus, who's the, like the author and finisher of your faith. So we are focusing on our career, focusing on college, because we want to get good grades, we want to graduate with like a 4.0 GPA, get a good job. So I like how you said that you were focused in school, but you were not focused on God, because those are two different things. Um, during our conversations, um, you mentioned something that has stuck with me. You talk about how you can be a Christian, but it's different from being a lover of Christ. Can you go into detail more about that? Well, I'll keep it real again because <laughs> I like to keep it real. So I was on another type of platform, like a webinar, and they mentioned something about um, and that stuck with me. That's why I probably why it's sticking with you, how somebody, man, woman, can be a believer of Christ. And remember, Luella, demons believe that's in Christ. Right. So what's the difference? Mm -hmm. I don't want to just be a believer. And that's what I was. I was just, I knew God was there because he showed himself present to me. But I didn't, I was lacking the love. Mm -hmm. I don't want just somebody that believes in God. Demons believe in God. The devil believes in God. I need to love God. I need to love love because God is love. Yeah. And how, I don't even—I didn't even know what love was until I started to get to know God. So I didn't just want to be a believer of a of a being that is up, you know, that's there. That you know what I mean. I believed He created us, but I didn't have love for the for love. You know what I mean? To really understand that, and that goes for you know, if you're choosing a mate, you don't want a man that's just gonna be. I believe in God. Oh, check. He believe in Him, but he doesn't have love for Him. He has no relationship with Him. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that stuck with me, you know. Definitely. Yeah. Like, when you talk about being a believer but, and being a lover of Christ, how it's different, it just reminds me of, and when you say demons and devil believe in God, and that's the truth, it just reminds me about Jesus being tempted in the wilderness and how the devil was using scriptures. The devil knows the scriptures, and he was using them to convince Jesus to, like, fall and, you know, come fall into temptation but Jesus was also able to use um, the scripture um, to to get out of that temptation. And so it's just, it's important for us to understand that it's not just all about believing in Christ. We need to be a lover of Christ. And 
the Bible talks about like if we love God, we will obey His commandments, and so that that is like amazing. So, Christina, let's just get into like the nitty gritty of stuff. Noel's mission is to help students or inspire, actually, inspire students to thrive in college and also grow in the love of Christ. And that's why we're spending today on this topic and how to grow as a Christian in college. Because I know college is like another different ball game. You're coming from high school, you're fresh out of high school, you're graduating, you're entering this place that you spend four years and then you're going to they'll ship you into the working class world and it's it's a lot of anxiety it's scary there's a lot of things like you know we're talking about identity in christ and how um in college a lot of people want to put things on you identify you with a lot of things but if you don't know your identity in christ then you're going to allow those to fall upon you but knowing your identity in christ kind of sets you apart um so i want to ask you this question how can one grow as a christian in college during the difficult times and when i mean by difficult times i mean like this pandemic that we're just going through and we see cases are also rising um and so in even in these difficult times we are called to be the light of the world we're called to be the salt of the earth as christians so how do we keep on growing because we don't want to remain stagnant as christians in college for those four years I'll actually read something to you before we even go um, along. And this was actually the bedrock of why we also created Numerous Nuggets because it is said that 70% of students lose their faith. 70%. 70% of students lose their faith in college. And only 35% eventually return. Only 35% eventually return. And so that's like, that's absorbed. And so... I think my question is, how do we keep on growing? Because we don't want to be stagnant. If we're stagnant, we're going to fall. I remember my dad always say something that spiritual things are slippery. So you got to, you got to be careful. You got to watch, you got to be on alert. And so how do we grow as a Christian in college during these difficult times? Okay. So you know how in college, right? They have required textbooks. You have to buy those textbooks and stuff mm -hmm. like that. A Christian, a Christian, we have a required textbook. It's the Holy Bible. Yes. So the same way you're, you're, the same way you're reading the, those textbooks, don't forget to lift that Bible up. Yes. <laughs> and you read. And not only read, you ask the Holy Spirit. And if you don't know the Holy Spirit, we can, you know, we can, we can cross that bridge. But you ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation as you read the Bible. So you have those required books as, you know, your, your major. My required book as a Christian is the Holy Bible to read and understand mm -hmm. God's character. I'm not going to know God if I don't pray to him. I'm not going to know God if I don't know the miracles that he's done before. And he's the same God from Genesis to Revelation. I'm not going to know unless I pick up the Bible. And that's what was different for me. Before I accepted Christ and before I was born again Christian, because that's when, when I was baptized, that's when I started to take things serious. You know what I mean? But before... I used to, I mean, I had a Bible, but just, you, I only opened it up at, at church when I went. Like I said, I still went to church here and there, you know, Easter, got a cute little outfit looking cute, you know, went there looking good, you know what I mean? Had my Bible opened up, looked like I was holy, but second I left there, that Bible was collecting mm. dust, and I was opening up my books and reading, reading, getting all the psychology knowledge that I thought was it, but then not, and because I opened my Bible, I, I soon um, learned that. Everything that we're dealing with physically is manifested itself Amen. spiritually. It says in Ephesians, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. It's about spiritual warfare. And that's why me, I'm like, you know what? For me to gain wisdom, I need the Bible. For me to learn about psychology, Bible, nursing, Bible. You know what I mean? For me to fight the spiritual war that nobody, right. you know, not nobody, but unless you know your word is going to know how to fight. I, I'm not going to be able to fight spiritually, physically. I'm going to look crazy. Mm. So oh. that's how you can, um, what was the question again, Noella? But that's how you can oh, remain. You, you, yeah, I love that. I love that. That's how I you grow. How you... Another thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Sorry. Go ahead. Another thing that I found is surrounding myself. Like for you, Noella, you're younger than me, but you, you have knowledge of the word. What does the word say? Iron sharpens mm -hmm. iron. Before I was surrounded myself with people that went clubbing, that did this, that, you know what I mean? Now I have Christian friends that can check me if I'm, you know, if I'm 
doing something crazy like <laughs> on a dating app or something <laughs> and they're telling me you know <laughs> anyway that's another topic <laughs> to focus on god and you know what i mean every like i was saying oh i just want to have a conversation well eve had a conversation with the serpent in in um in um um in the garden that checked me real quick that was i am shopping i am girl <laughs> you better check yourself yeah. having conversations with anybody that's how it starts so that's that's how you grow surrounding yourself with christians reading your word and not i can say go to church but go to church to actually listen to the word go to church and practice what the pastor is preaching go to church and after open up your bible and read all the scriptures that the pastor said you know have your own personal relationship and speaking about going to church even now in the pandemic everyone is at home so it's like a whole mm-hmm. different dynamics like you i catch myself sometimes like because you know when we go to church it's like a routine we know we're going for this or i know i'm ministering i'm serving in the choir for this service or for this service so it's like all planned out but now at home sometimes even to get up for the 8:30 a.m. service is like you know you got to check yourself have you been really pursuing god and working like trying to develop a real relationship with god because i feel like honestly moving to online service has mm-hmm. really made a lot of people check their relationship with god if it was really a sunday sunday thing if they just driving to church was to check that map check that box instead of just like yeah. being in your house. So now a lot of people have been have been have been challenged to actually stay in their house and read their bible and turn on that TV and do that online service. So it's totally different. Anyways, thank you for that. So let's talk about how you first encountered God. I know you've talked about um your college school days and everything. So how did you Everyone has that encounter, that experience. I know um as a I grew up um in the in a um um faith church or family church and you know my parents are ministers and so I grew up knowing Christ but there are points in my life where I had to make a distinctive like stand and say okay this is Christ this is what I believe this is where I'm going and not just because of my parents because on judgment day I'm not going to be in front of my parents it's like me and god you know and so what was your encounter with god what actually brought you closer to god okay that's like two questions because if you say the encounter yeah. i had an encounter a long time ago but if you said when i decided to follow christ that was like 23 when i got baptized uh, and really started to follow i had an so which one do you want You, you want my first then encounter? Your first encounter and then I would like us to talk also about the baptism part. Yeah. So my first encounter with God was this is you know, I guess this, this has nothing to do with college but I was in school. <laughs> I was 15 and I just went through uh, just a major depression and through that major depression um God really came down for me. He opened up my eyes, my spiritual eyes. And that's why I I I'm so happy that I have knowledge from Ephesians to know that we're not dealing with um fresh and blood because my spiritual eyes was open. I saw demons, I saw angels, you know what I mean? Um so my first encounter was me rem- like I I had a a encounter with, you know, demons. I know this sounds crazy, but it says in the word of God we we're, we're dealing with heavenly places yeah. and demonic forces. So it was around the corner from my house. I still lived there. and i seen them you know a lot but this at this point in time i saw like 10 like you know demonic spirits in front of me and i was i got to the point where inside myself cuz i'm like this is getting ridiculous and it was because i was far away from god it was because you know now you know hindsight looking back i didn't have the full armor i didn't have the helmet of salvation breastplate of righteousness the word um the sword which is you know the word i didn't have any of that that's why i was being persecuted but god works everything out So at that time, let me go back to that <laughs> the 10 demons. I said inside myself and remember I used to go to church when I was little. So I remembered right then and there I remembered like a flash like of the pastor mm-hmm. saying, "God will never leave you nor forsake you." So inside myself I said, "God," because I remembered what the pastor said. I didn't remember what the Bible said because remember I didn't open up my Bible. Mm-hmm. I'm the pastor the I I told God inside myself. So I did like a personal prayer when I saw those 10 demonic spirits. I said, "God, I thought you would never leave me nor forsake me." And right then and there 
I have no reason to lie, and God knows what I've seen. Two angels on the left side and on my right side came to to like like protect me. The demonic spirits backed off and backed away, and then that one of the angels said, "You are a special assignment from God." And she was even surprised that she saw me. <laughs> she was surprised that she saw me. So that was my first encounter, I guess, with angelic spirits. But with God, you know, with God and his power and how he can send his yeah. angels to protect you in the power of his yeah. word. You see how, because I said, God, I thought you would never, I thought, I thought you said you would never leave me nor forsake me. If he left me there, I would have been like, there's no God. He said, you know what? This girl remembers my word. Boom. Yeah. He said angels right then and there. So that's my first encounter. But I'm such a hot mess. That's not when I decided to really follow Christ. You would think. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I'm so hard headed. You would think, but God has so much mercy and grace. You would think that would be when I when I really no. Ain't that a hot mess? Now that I think back, you would think I would have been like God. You're you know you're it. I still was a believer. Remember what I said? Remember what? Fifteen all the way to twenty three, twenty four. Yeah, I mean I was a believer this whole time. I went to church, but I didn't I didn't follow His commandments about you know example. I don't know, I don't need to say, but his commandments about certain things. I was I was lukewarm, if that. You know what I mean? I, I didn't yeah. take it for all it was. I was making up my own rules. I wasn't listening. I wasn't I, I wasn't convicted yet about, you know, dating and stuff like that. I, I didn't feel convicted until when I was around twenty three, twenty four, I'm like, you know what? I don't think what I'm doing is right. Like this isn't working out. It's been years, like I said. And it's not working out. You know what I mean? All these things that God's telling you not to do is to make sure you don't open up these doors for these de demonic spirits to have any authority over your life. You know? You, you know what I mean? That's why he tells you to wait for marriage for, you know, intimacy. That's why he tells you not to swear. Respect your, your, um, your mother and your father. You know what I mean? All this is so that these doors won't be open to these spiritual, you know, the devil roams around looking for someone he can devour. If you're going around doing things God tells you not to do, he has a, you know, he can accuse you. Oh, look what she's doing. I, I, I can do that because she's, she's doing this. She's not, she's not um, obeying your command. People don't think that it's because they're trying, God is protecting you. He knows you're his child. Oh, that brings me to another thing. God adopted me, girl. I've been, <laughs> I've been adopted. Before we, before we dive deeper, I want to just welcome um, all the people. I see some new faces. Welcome, welcome. This is the first day of Noah Lusna gets back to school um, giveaway. But today we are actually putting God first. We're talking about how to um, grow as a Christian in college because we know it is difficult and we don't want to remain stagnant in our relationship. No. We want to grow. We want to keep growing with God. So Christina has been talking and sharing with us her life as a college student and growing and her encounter with God. And um, I love what you say about us not when we do not obey God's commandments, then we give way to the enemy to accusers. And it just reminds me in Jeremiah how the Bible says Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And it also reminds me. I don't know yeah. if it's in Psalms, but it says if you break the edge, the serpent will bite. It's like if you break that edge, that edge is God's covering. It's the principles of God. If you break oh, that wow. edge, Preach. the serpent yes. will bite. Amen. And so it is important for us to actually follow God, wow. to love him and to obey his word and to study and to keep on growing and not remain stagnant. And so you were talking about how God adopted you. So let's continue that. <laughs> Okay, um, so, you know, you know how people say, oh, there's like spiritual cur curses and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I mean, you know, that can run in your family and et cetera, et cetera. For me, I, I, def I feel a revelation, like, that I've been adopted because all the things that happened in the past was because I didn't accept God as, as, as my, uh, you know, my adopted father. Now that I accepted God as my adopted father, have covering. So now I'm, I'm not in the spiritual curses of my own family. You know, I'm adopted into God's kingdom Amen. under his covering. Like you said, you know what I yep. mean? So I really feel like I've been adopted. You know what I mean? I want to do a study on that about adoption and stuff, but I've been adopted into God's kingdom. Like all the stuff, this, that I don't even know. I don't even care. Amen. Cause I ain't a part of that bloodline. Amen. I got Jesus Christ's blood running through me. Amen. Woo! 
<laughs> I'm telling right. you. And none of all the stuff from family's past, family, you know what I mean? I'm from here. I don't know what my family's doing back in Haiti. You know, I'm not saying anything bad, but you just don't know. Only God knows their heart. Whatever they're doing doesn't matter. I'm now I'm adopted into God's kingdom. He is my heavenly father. You know what I mean? And I'm his child, I'm his daughter, and he's not going to let any any evil spirit or the devil do anything to me. That's why he has grace and mercy. You know, my me my eyes being open in the past could have looked like, you know, something horrible or whatever, but for God that was a gift. Because now, what, I'm 30-something, like, so 15-plus years later, I have wisdom and knowledge about mental health because now I know it's spiritual warfare. You know what I mean? So God has, he works everything out for your good. He has plans. He sees way, way out in the future, you know? So, um, yeah. That's and great. I'll leave it at that. I yeah. mental health tomorrow, which is day two, um, I'm going to be having a chat on Instagram uh, with Benin. She is going to be talking about mental health for the college girl, and she is amazing. Um, so don't forget to join us live tomorrow at 6 p.m., same time, Eastern Standard Time, tongue twister. Uh, but um, as Christina was talking, I just want to mention some of our resources that we are giving out for um, the giveaway. And this one is prayers for singleness. Um, Christina speaks about that. And also, wisdom. We talk about verses um, for wisdom. This is another verses for wisdom. And, you know, you can be focused in school trying to get your degree so that you can get a career <clears throat> and a good career, a good paying job, whatever. But you also need the wisdom of God. And so, uh, we talk about, we did talk about our identity in Christ. If you one second, I'm pulling this apart. We talked about our uh, identity in Christ, um, how you need to know who you are in Christ. So people don't tell you who you are, and you just accept it and you absorb it. And also, you talked about sh iron sharpening iron, and we have prayers for friendship. You need godly friendships in your life as Amen. a college student. And that has been something that has been important. I know since I started college, a lot of friends until it's been four years and a lot of people that I called friends have just slowly, you know, withered away. They're no longer friends. I know sometimes it's really hard to make that decision to, of whom to keep as your friend. But seriously, if you just pray, I remember praying because it was this one friend I just couldn't let go of. I don't know. We just had this connection. And I just prayed, you know, God, if this is not your will, let it not happen. And it started breaking up. Not like a bad, not nothing bad happened, but it just kept, like we just kept moving apart. And so it's important for us to pray for godly friendship. So Christina, um, how has putting God first helped you with your schooling? <sighs> well, um, cause I used to put school first, right? I used to not put him, put school first, but kind of. You know, and um, not everything goes well. You know what I mean? And you sometimes struggle. you might idolize school. You huh? struggle. There's more like a struggling. It's not, you know how when God gives you grace to do something, you're graced to do something. When you don't put God first, I feel like you struggle. Yeah. With how you react to certain things. You know what I mean? Um. So... Can you repeat the question? I'm how, how <laughs> I already has forgot. So. God first helped you with your schooling. Like if you look past. You okay. Look so, first. all right. So, okay. Thank you for repeating that. So I'll go, I'll start from my, my, um, associate degree, nursing degree. Um, what a difference because as you know, I shared with you and I've shared with a lot of people pursuing this degree. This wasn't my first time pursuing a nursing degree. I was at Northeastern and um, in a, an accelerated program, thought I was, uh, oh, I got in, look at me, I was the only black person, Woo! look at me, look at me, but I failed, <laughs> look at me, look at me now, I failed, you know what I mean, and it was such a battle, I remember, you know, I was a believer of God then, but I didn't really seek, no, I didn't, like, as I'm reflecting back, like, I used to, like, uh, 
listen, I would not sleep. I would stay at the library all night. That's not good. Sleep is essential. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't really read my Bible. I probably did go to church and stuff, but I didn't have a deeper intimacy, reliance, confidence in God. I had confidence in trying to get that degree and mm-hmm. what that meant. And when I didn't pres- get that degree, I got so I got so depressed over it. Remind you, it's just a degree. But but God, you know, when God comes in, he comes in, right? He comes in through me failing. That's when I started my um my ministry. You know, it's a group of us um, in the thing called Fired Up Faith. Um, because I really, you would think it's just a degree, right? I really felt like I, I lost my faith then. And it was with having, you know, friendships with like Iron Sharpens Iron. I had some, some friends um, that really encouraged me to get into the word of God. It's one thing being a believer. It's one thing thinking you, you have spiritual knowledge. Remind you, I told you I saw demonic spirits. So I'm like, who? I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. You spiritual go with, with no Bible. You crazy. <laughs> you need the Bible. <laughs> you can't just be spiritual with no word of God, girl. <laughs> so it was by getting into the word of God um, and, and diving in and knowing, you know, the, the authority and the power that I have in the name of God, not just people telling me, but reading it for myself. And knowing that it, it is active and alive. It's active and alive. Amen. Perfect example is what I said. God, I thought you will never leave me nor forsake me. That word, boom. The angels came down because of that word that I told God, his own word. So by putting God first in my second degree, my se- well, it is my second degree at um, Bunk Hill Community College. Shout out Community College. Woo woo. So Bunk Hill Community College, um, I really put God first. It wasn't just only going to church and doing ushering and paying my tithe. But when I struggled this time, I struggled um, at a point in time where I failed two exams. I failed a midterm that like, ooh, girl. It brought me back because I have trauma from, I had trauma from Northeastern. I'm like, oh, mom, you know, what if I fail? And then by having, and it's good to have, you know, moms in the word of God, it's, well, it's good to have moms. But um, it says, you know, you grow your child up the way they should go and they won't depart from it. And that's why I haven't departed from the word. So my mom decided to have a prayer and fasting every Wednesday. And I swear, after that, I started to pass all my exams. I was kind of distracted at the time. I was, you know, studying with people and stuff like that. But God redirected me, my focus on him. On our weaknesses, he's, he is strong, yeah. right? He gives us peace. He gives us peace. I remember in class, a student was like, everybody was nervous for an exam. And I came in there like, usually I'm nervous. I came in there like, la, 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 la. Like, Christina, you're so, where'd you get this peace? I was like you. When I went home, I'm like, wow, that's the peace that's, that's beyond understanding. understanding. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's God, because th- we're doing an exam. You would think I, <laughs> I was just chilling. She, I was just surprised that she said that, you know, those words. Oh, you look, you're peaceful. I wish I was on what you were on. I mean, I wasn't on nothing but the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? So by me focusing on God, you know, examples, before I study, I pray. Before an exam, I pray, I rely on him. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not perfect. I'm not like a perfect Christian, but I, I grew from where I was. I grew from when I was 15. I grew from the day I got baptized till today by getting into the word of God, you know, doing Bible studies and praying and understanding God for myself, not the God of my mother, but the God of Christina Sannon, you know, my God, <laughs> my God, Christina's God that came through, delivered me, you know, renewed my mind. Cause I was a little, woo. God renewed that mind. <laughs> he said, I'm not leaving you where I found you. I'm not leaving you ashamed. I'm leaving you. You're my daughter. Your father don't want you looking a hot mess up in here. He wants you looking good. He wasn't going to let me fail again. God don't let you fail. By me failing Northeastern, that what? That humbled me because I was a little bit prideful because guess what? I'm at Northeastern. Oh, you're at Northeastern? Bye-bye. You failed. Now what? Mm. Now you're down. Now you're humble. That's when God will raise you up. But by him doing that, you know, he wants you lacking in nothing. You know what I mean? That's what it says in James. God wants you lacking in nothing. He wants you to go, he wants you to go through tests and trials. Some of the um, Israelites didn't make it to the promised land. He was going to let me go around time before I learned my lesson my lesson was guess what colossians 3 2 set your mind above where christ is seated in the right hand mm-hmm. matthew 6 33 seek first the mm-hmm. kingdom of god i shouldn't be seeking first a degree i shouldn't be seeking first a, a boyfriend or a man i need to seek first my heavenly father that created me 
that knows what I'm supposed to be doing. So by me actually understanding that my purpose on this earth isn't just a degree and look good and make money. My purpose is seeking him first and everything else will be added, which might involve the degree looking good and making money. But because God said, Christina, this is what you're supposed to do. This is the degree that you're supposed to pursue. This is the school you're supposed to be. And guess what? You need to be humble about it. This isn't about you at the end of the day. So God really came through by humbling me and knowing that I had to rely on him and that, you know, um, I'm still going to struggle and I need him by me not passing those two exams. I really, you know, I, every Wednesday, my, me and my mom pray, you know what I mean? I was relying on him and not relying on myself thinking, Oh, I got this. I've been studying. I'm getting A's. Well, look, you didn't pass that one. Cause you got distracted. You weren't, you wasn't putting me first. You got distracted. You still need to put me first, rely on me because when you're weak, that's when he's really strong. He can show himself powerful. I'm not, I don't have this knowledge because of myself. I have this knowledge because God renewed my mind, gave me clarity and the wisdom to know how to study, to know how to prioritize and to know how to do these things. I wasn't able going to, I wasn't going to be able to do this Noel, at all. If you knew me where, where I was, you pro- you'd be amazed that guess what? Christina Sandin is a registered nurse. Christina Sandin has a sound mind because of the glory of God. He ain't going to leave me a hot mess. He ain't going to do that. Yes, yes, yes. I love, I love there's so many points you just um, brought up from what you were saying and how we are not, we're not identified by our grades. You know, a lot of us, like I remember when I got my first C in college, um, that was like last fall, I think. And that was in my master's course. So the first master's course I took, I got a first C. And that was just a blow. That's a that's a fail. That's a failing grade for a master's course. And so I had to retake that course, go into that same class, sit, sit down under that same teachings and everything. And, you know, humble myself and there. everything. Yep. And, you know, if I look back, you know, sometimes we don't know when we're prideful, but pride can creep in, you know. And honestly, looking back, I would say I had, there was, like, pride in me because I was just saying, okay, you know, I'm going to finish my degree in this year, go into my master's, get this. I don't want to go back to school, you know. Um, I just want to finish, get a good job, get a nice house, move out of my parents' house, this, that, that. Like, I, you know me, I'm a planner, so I had everything set. And so we talk about, I remember when we went out on um, one, when we went to the restaurant with um, some of your friends, we, I, I was talking about how God interrupts your life to bring you into his destiny, though, to bring you into your Amen. right destiny, his calling and his purpose for life. Yep. And so it's us not purpose. taking that grade, that letter grade and just saying, okay, because I got a C, I'm a failure. Because I got a D, I'm a failure. And, you know, God interrupts your life for a reason, you know? And so I thank God for the, for the interruptions of life, honestly. <laughs> As a college student, I thank God for the interruptions of life. And so you, uh, your journey, your testimony is amazing. Um, thank you so much, honestly. Do, would you like to share any final thoughts? Um. I'll leave you guys with the scripture. I'm going to say it all wrong. I'm going to paraphrase, paraphrase it. Hebrews um, 10, 35, 36. Do not lose your confident trust in the Lord. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Remember the great reward he has for you. And that was when you will receive what he has promised. I believe God spoke this to me, you know, so... Because I had some confidence in an area and I started to lose confidence. But he doesn't want me to lose my confident trust in him. He wants me to continue to be patient. You mentioned something like you had plans to do. I had plans. I should have been a nurse practitioner mm-hmm. by now. I had plans for plans. Like it was all said. I got in. It sounded like a good plan. You got into the program, right? You're doing good. And then God interrupts. Or you interrupt your yourself. Yeah. and then he, Or you mess up yourself. And then God has to come in and save you. <laughs> And in James, it says for us to lack in nothing. Me, if I passed Northeastern and I was a nurse three or four years ago, who knows? I wouldn't have, even my mom said that. I don't think you would have taken God as serious as you are now. 
And it's not only about me starting up a ministry called Fired Up Faith, but literally my own personal relationship. I was just a believer. I didn't have a love for God. I didn't understand that he'll do things for us to lack in nothing. You know, he doesn't want us to be prideful. I could have been a believer, prideful, a nurse, making money and think I was something. Mm -hmm. When really, I'm just dust. I'm just here to pursue God's will for me. He's the creator for me. And, he, and I trust him and had confidence, like he says, that I will receive what he has promised for me, just like he has a promise for you. So I just encourage you guys to, you know, don't lose your confident trust or get some trust in God because you might not have any confidence trust to get some trust in God that um, he, he has many plans for you. They're for good. They're for, for you to prosper. Um, and even when you get interrupted and it might seem like the end of the world, look, I didn't give up on nursing because I had a God in me, to be honest, because if I didn't have God in me in a relationship, I could have just been like, nursing isn't for me. I'm not going to go back. Mm -hmm. But because I knew God had a plan for me and I had confidence in that plan and, you know, and I know God has many plans. Right. So his plan could have, my plan could have just been straight Northeastern, become an NP and that's it. No, many plans. I went to a community college, got my degree. Now I'm at another school getting my BSN, and I still have plans. But remember, <laughs> humans make many plans, God laughs. So I'm still in the process of, God, what you, what you want me to do now? <laughs> should I get my, get, should I get a DMP? Should I, should I go to school for this? Ah, what you want to do? You might interrupt. I need to be ready. You know what I mean? So I need to always seek him first, Matthew 6, 33, because I, me making my own plans, I, you know, I'm not 100%. God is 100% with what he's going to do. What he says will happen. His promise will not, it will come to fulfillment. So I need to rely on him, seek him first, and everything else will be added to me. My degree, my husband, you know, <laughs> I'll keep around prophesying right now. All these good things, my, you know, my college, I'm a lifelong learner. I'll probably be in school I'll probably be on Noella Nuggets when I'm 50 years old talking about college <laughs> because I believe in school. I believe in education, but at the end of the day, I believe in God and have a love for God. And I want to, I want to follow his plan for me because I know he knows what's best. He knows what's in me that I don't even know of. Remember before you were in your mother's womb, he knew you. So some things that God revealed to me, I'm like, wait, what? I have that in me. <laughs> he probably be like, yeah, girl, you don't even know what I put in you. So God, he has good plans for you. Have confidence in his plan. Have confidence that he loves you. He is love. Have confidence that his plans and his promise will fulfill for you. And they're good because he's a good father. He's a good God. And have and have a relationship with him. Have your own personal relationship. Not just what me and Noelle are saying, but open up that Bible just like you would open up their, your textbooks when you were studying in the library, like me studying in the library till 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. I opened up that Bible too, you know? I opened up that Bible and got encouragement. I opened up that Bible and found, you know, encouragement and words to, to help me continue to study, to give me life and a purpose, not just me getting a degree, building up debt and try to have the American dream. I'm trying to have the kingdom, Jesus Christ yeah. dream to make it to everlasting life. And that's guaranteed for me. This American dream isn't guaranteed. You know, we have to th have more. We have to think more everlasting, mm -hmm. more eternity, not just what's happening right here, right now. Mm -hmm. And let me end with this. Jesus is king. Black ain't king. Jesus is king. Okay, get it, get it right. I'm not going to be serving the, the gods of my ancestors. I'm going to serve Jesus Christ who died for me and gave me life. Let's get it, let's get it right. All right, let's, let's listen to the truth. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So Romans 10, 9 says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and if we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved So. For someone who is asking right now, how can I be saved? Like, I want to know this Jesus. I just want to lead you um, in a salvation prayer. I want you to know that Jesus came on earth. He lived and walked like a man like us. And he died on the cross to save you. Like, I, in one of Noella's weekly talks, I was talking about how, um, how, people would say, I would die for you. You know, I would never let anything happen to you. But can someone suffer for you? There's a difference between just dying for someone and suffering for someone. And we read in Isaiah how the Jesus was whipped on his back. He took lashes for us. They put a crown of turns on his head and he bled. 
they spat in his face. They mocked him. And, you know, he was nailed on the cross of Calvary for our sins. He bore upon him our sins. The Bible says that even while we were in sin, Christ knew us. Christ died for us. And so I would just, if you want to know Christ, if you want to have a personal relationship with him, the first step is, is just confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart, with your heart, that Jesus Christ is Lord. So if you can say this prayer with me, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for dying on the cross of Calvary for me for taking away my sin, for taking away my shame, for taking away my guilt. I, I, I turn away from my sins. I turn away from my past and I surrender to you. I want you to be Lord over my life. I want you to be, be Lord over my academics, over my college career, Amen. whatever it is. Amen. I give you everything yes. and I want to live for you all the days of my life. Help me to live for you. And if you pray that prayer and you want to talk to us more, um, you can email me, noelsnuggets at gmail.com. Um, it's all confidential. Also, do not forget to check out Christina on Instagram, um, christina.sanon.79 um, on Instagram and also on Facebook. And also, you can join Fired Up Fate um, on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you follow her on Instagram. You can see the link and the numbers and everything. I'm going to post it below when I share this also. So thank you so much, y'all, for joining us for the first day. This has been amazing, like putting God first, putting God first in everything we do. And so I look forward to like being live again with you guys for tomorrow. If you have questions ahead of time, please send them. And we're going to be talking about mental health for the college girl. And so thank you so much, Christina, for joining us today. I really appreciate it. I've been blessed. We have been blessed. And thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for having All right. me. All for the glory Amen. of God. I couldn't, I couldn't say no about talking about God. What you, what you thought? <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> have a good night, everyone. God bless. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's amazing.